So the first one will be our pacemaker rhythm. So before we go further into discussing what are the ECG changes in the pacemaker rhythm, a little bit on what is pacemaker. As you know, a pacemaker is a small device that is placed under the skin in your chest to help control your heartbeat. It is used to help your heartbeat to be more regular if you have an irregular heartbeat or we call it in a medical term, arrhythmia. And to implant a pacemaker in your chest, it will require a surgical procedure. So what are the usage of pacemaker? Why do people put in a pacemaker in a particular patient? So a pacemaker is implanted to help control your heartbeat. Okay, it can also be implanted temporarily to treat a slow heartbeat after a heart attack, surgery, or due to medication overdose. On the other hand, it can also be implanted permanently to correct a slow or irregular heartbeat, or in some cases, to help to treat heart failure. So what are the ECG features in a pacing rhythm or a pacing ECG? So the appearance of the ECG in a pace patient, which is a patient on pacemaker, is dependent on the pacing mode which is used, the placement of the pacing links, the device pacing threshold, as well as whether there is a presence of a native electrical activity or not. And the features of this pace ECG is what we call as a pacing spikes. So what are the features of a pacing spikes? So a pacing spike is actually a vertical spike of a short duration, usually roughly around 2 milliseconds. It may be difficult to see in all its, and the amplitude will depend on the position as well as the type of the lid. There are actually a few types of pacing spikes, depending on the area where the pacing originated. The first one is our atrial pacing. It is actually a pacing spike that preceded your P wave. And the morphology of P wave dependent of lid placement, but may appear normal. The second type is known as a ventricular pacing spikes. So for ventricular pacing spikes, the pacing spike will precede the QRS complex. In comparison to the atrial spike just now, it precedes your P wave. In ventricular pacing spikes, the spike will precede the QRS complex. And depending on the lead placement, a right ventricular pacing lead placement will result in the QRS morphology similar to left bundle branch block pattern. Whereas in a left epicardial pacing lead placement will result in a QRS morphology which is similar to right bundle branch block pattern. The third type of passing spikes is what we call as a dual chamber passing. So this one will be dependent on areas that begin pace. It may exhibit features of both arterial pacing as well as ventricular pacing. And the passing spikes may precede only P wave or only QRS complex, or actually precede both. So this is the example of atrial and ventricular passing spikes. As you can see from the arrow, the first arrow is referring to the atrial passing spike, and the second arrow is referring to our ventricular passing spike. Let's see a few examples of ECGs. So this is an example of ECG in a dual chamber pacing. As you can see, as I highlighted in the circle, in the red circle, you can see both the atrial pacing as well as the ventricular pacing spikes. So the explanation for dual chamber pacing, ECG changes, Atrial and ventricular passing spikes are visible before each QRS complex 
And from that particular ECG just now, you can see there is 100% atrial capture, meaning that there is a small P wave following each atrial passing spike. So it's for every atrial passing is followed by a P wave. You can also see 100% ventricular capture, meaning that for every ventricular passing spike is followed by a QRS complex. And in this ECG also, you can see that the QRS complex are broad with a left bundle branch block morphology, which indicates that the ventricular passing electrodes was placed in the right ventricle. The next example will be our ventricular pacing ECG. So as you can see from the ECG and the circle, the red circle, you can see that there is a ventricular passing spike that precedes the QRS complex. And you cannot see any atrial passing spikes there. There is no spikes that preceded the P wave. And in these particular cases, the underlying native rhythm is probably caused atrial fibrillation because you can see there are several possible P wave in V1, but otherwise the atrial activity is chaotic. The next example will be our atrial pacing ECG changes. In this ECG, you can see there are regular passing spikes, which is our atrial passing spikes at 90 beats per minute and following each passing spike, there is our P wave indicating 100% atrial capture. And that concludes our first part, which is our ventricular pace rhythm ECG.